here at GAD, start of a new week. Um, we had a DBS Superleggera in, incredible car, made a ton of power, ton of torque. That will be on the previous video, I think. Um, weather absolutely pants could barely do any road testing couldn't get a gopro on it or anything like that for anything to do with um getting it out in the wild the weather was just too poor um lovely to wake up this morning and the weather is still still a little on the chilly side but sunny as you can see bosh um in behind me look at that lovely rs6 local client originally had it tuned company down south um had nothing but issues they basically sort of brushed their hands of it and then found out that um i think he said it needed new new cams um so obviously the the engine wasn't in a state to tune anyway they went ahead and obviously client had nothing but issues so i think he's about five or six grand into it now um he had it done i think he said four or five months ago the car is now running like a dream he's been driving it everywhere put a load of miles on it no issues whatsoever i've had just run diagnostics on the car and been out for a little road test car is good as gold so on the dyno i will be strapping it down in a second and yeah then we'll see see what she's doing stock because it was put back to stock I think by the company that carried out the um, the physical work. It was actually, I think he said it was VW Audi Tech in Chelmsford. Those guys are really, really good. I've got a load of clients that use them for their RS3s, RS6s. One of my customers has got a V8 R8, uses them quite a lot. Yeah, I've, I've, I've only heard good things about those guys and I've recommended them, uh, some of our clients in the past to go to them and I've never heard anything bad. So yeah, I'm sure the car is in tip top shape. So I will probably next bit will be maybe a power run so yeah we'll see how it goes right front ends all strapped down so with these what you do anything all-wheel drive when it's on the rollers you want to strap from the rear obviously you don't want the car going forward but when you strap from the front you're cross strapping you don't want any left or right you don't want the car to have any ability to go left or right you just want to keep it pinned even if there's a little bit of steering lock applied for whatever reason not that there should be you don't want the car to be able to move anywhere um so yeah underneath hold on underneath cross strap there but again with these main rad pack at the front but the little auxiliary coolers so if you can see just get right in there and that's what these are brilliant at. We can just pump a ton of air straight into those, high pressure, um, keep everything nice and cool. the stock stuff done um data login power graphs exactly how she ran the car's running absolutely perfectly she's done i think about seventy thousand miles um so she's not quite hitting oem levels but nothing to write home about i think it's about four or five horsepower down from what um audi quote but look at this for a beast just look at that oh yeah, just so squat. Obviously, I think he's running some form of spaces on it. it. Really pulls those wheels out. Let's have a little look in there. Yeah, running spaces. Um, yeah, well, I mean, what more can you say? The quintessential super, super estate, really. Practical, powerful. Yeah, just does everything. Does its job really, really well. I know that some people were 
disappointed who moved to the newer shape. Um, I don't have too much experience with the later ones, um, so I couldn't comment for myself, but yeah, this thing's performing really, really well, so I'm expecting some decent numbers. I'm not going to go hard on it, just purely because um, I think his wife drives it a lot of the time as well, so there's no point making it absolutely ballistic if she's the one taking the kids in it all the time. There's always got to be a balance between performance, reliability, drivability, and that's obviously what we try and try and achieve as best we can. So yeah, I'll um, probably show you because um, I've really got a crack on with this one. I will probably show you when I'm all done. I'll show you the dyno plots, what it did before, what it's done after. So yeah. Here we go, guys. So finally finished. Um, they're 560 PS. So what's that? 553 or 54 horsepower, um, and it pulled 550. Talk really strong. The booked at 700 newton meters, and it's pulled nearly 750. Like I say, we weren't going crazy with this one, but. Um, 686 horsepower, 952 newton meters. Uh, deltas really good everywhere. So, with a bit of luck, customer will be over the moon with that. I'm sure he will be. Um, like I say, he's a local guy. Um, a pal of his brought his RS3 into us as well. So, yeah, really, really nice guys. Uh, I will see you on the next car. I suppose I better take me uh, flip flops off, put some proper proper shoes on, and do some work. Um, got a lovely C63 in. Um, new to the customer, the last couple of weeks has been having some issues with it. Um, and basically, long and story, long long and short of the story is, he's bought it. Company's MOT'd it. He says it's really really loud. Came up with an engine light. It's got cylinder misfire. So. Core packs have now, we've now changed. Uh, John at Cordage Automotive sorted that out for us. Um, the car under inspection is already running decat downpipes. It's running a tune from one of our competitors that unfortunately we have to fix a lot of stuff from there quite a lot of the time. And this is gonna be no different. It feels awful. Just moving it around the car park, it feels terrible. Whatever it is they've done with the throttle, is not is not good at all gearbox can't work out what it's doing it feels snatchy um so what i'm going to do is flash it all back to stock obviously we will after a few runs get a cat efficiency fault we know that because it's not running any um cats in the downpipes so that will after a few cycles that will flag again that side of it we will obviously rectify anyway so it's going to sound really really good these sound obviously brilliant it's got the valved system although it's a non-s it came with a valve system uh, option on this one so yeah i will probably do some pulls film it externally probably do some pulls film it internally uh, you guys will be able to hear how good it is but one second hold on let me get down here i have to be careful having the old flip-flops on nice set of wheels on it it's a beautiful color like I say, new to the customer, we've um, we've done an inspection. We had it up on the ramps before we did the coil pack and just thought, you know, while we've got it, check everything over. Apart from the odd little bit of under tray missing, which is just what happens when cars have done a certain mileage. Car's actually quite a nice example. Um, so yeah, I will film some of the runs and bring you along for the ride. Right, we are now inside the car. <coughs> Excuse me. So, everything's up to temperature. Yeah. yeah. You can tell when when people really don't know how to tune this properly. The car starts misbehaving, but for weird things. Um, usually, to me, the biggest indicator is how the throttle feels. If the throttle doesn't feel very nice, then they've been adjusting things in such a way that you shouldn't. The other thing that happens is transmission starts misbehaving. Um, and this just feels, this feels horrible. So we'll, we will correct that as well. 
and after we've done everything, before I send the customer on his way, I will reset all the transmission adaptations as well. So it will go away with a clean bill of health, it will go away functioning correctly, drivability will be greatly improved. Um, right, ready to go. Right, so just do a little pause, just so you can hear, but it sounds, sounds brilliant. I mean, they do, the 177 engine just sounds fantastic. either a little bit fluffy or a little bit snatchy and this has been doing both I noticed it straight away before I moved it to the workshop side and I was just trying to pull it out of the car park you know you'd engage drive I was in comfort I was in auto and the throttle was like a switch it was like nothing 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 and then it would just fire a gear in shoot you off up the road yeah it's just it just misbehaving a little bit so um, I'm just gonna get it all back to stock so You'll probably see, excuse me, you will probably see shots of it externally and I'll probably just wrap it up and show you guys what we've ended on because I do really need to, you know, we've sorted out a coil pack, we need to be listening out to see if any others are possibly on their way. There's no indication there is but yeah, rather than me filming I should just concentrate on, on getting the, the customer done and wrapped up. So yeah, I'll put in the video of it running up, anything else I come across on the way, I will uh, let you guys know. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, previous video with the Aston Martins, I was showing, because they run a really similar engine to these, I was showing you the air path for um, under the bonnet, they have a flap and they have like a scoop in, internally in the bonnet that chucks a load of air over the turbos. On these, they have this here. So up from under the bonnet, and then once you hit a certain, you know, speed, probably about 30 miles an hour, it's just enough pressure to open that flap, and then it will shoot cool air over the turbos, and then same again, all the shielding over the downpipes and around the downpipes goes down and under the car, and then it expels the heat from there. So uh, yeah, obviously with these V8s, inbound turbos, they, there's a lot of heat that happens under the bonnet and you've got to get rid of it somehow. So yeah, that's their, that's their solution for it. Here we go, thought I'd show you around the uh, front end of the car. Beautiful. Not sure what wheels they are, but um, this style, they really, I think they really suit these cars. Um, one second. So, the previous tune, it was barely doing more than stage one power really and it was running way too rich way way too rich i'll probably say a good eight ten percent too much fuel so it's pulling in about 570 odd horsepower which like i say we regularly see 580 horsepower software alone 
so what I did is I just factory reset knock it back to stock these are booked at 469 horsepower and hold on let me cover some bits up and it pulled 467 so it was right there a little over 700 newton meters we've ended on 612 well over 900 newton meters of torque the plot is look really nice deltas are really good um, lots of power and torque uh, everywhere so I'm going to go for a quick road test problem is um, it's just started it's just started raining so I mean not that you go fast on a road test anyway road tests aren't for going out being silly that's what the dyno's for drive as fast as you want on the rollers not on the road so oh and I've got a reset transmission adaptation so I'll probably do that and then head out so yeah I think customers gonna be over the moon especially because like I say he's had it for a few weeks had a few issues we've managed to rectify them get the thing running right software on it's now sorted even idling it smells so much better than what it did before it was massively over fueling um, so yeah another another happy customer here we go ladies and gentlemen we are here uh, it is a Saturday today um, we have a lovely GLC 63 in gorgeous car beautiful spec um, equipped with the M177 engine, non-S, so 469 horsepower standard. They're usually within a couple of horsepower of that, so I'm excited to see um, what it does. These easily gain 100 horsepower, stage one. Um, got a few checks I've got to do. I've got to go around. Diagnostic suite is finished, that's all good. Just double check tires, fluids, things like that. Let it have a little bit of a cool down on the rollers while I'm while I'm um obviously strapping it down, getting it getting it ready to go. Um yeah, beautiful package. You know, they're bigger than a C class, of, of course, but you know, they're not GLE territory, so they are that perfect um in between that sort of mini mini SUV. Um segment that obviously they um sell these in so yeah i will get some footage of it on the rollers i'll get some footage inside the car and uh and obviously externally uh yeah customers gonna love it obviously customers already talking about upgrades this is a 2019 so these come equipped with the opf filters so unfortunately they don't sound quite as nice there's not as much of, the, of that um, AMG bark because the OPF filters do kill some of that. So we will chat to him regarding, you know, a sports catted downpipe. More power to be unlocked after that, of course. But really, it's for that um, that audio. It's for that soundtrack. So yeah, I will let you guys uh, listen listen to this beast. Ladies and gentlemen, you join me now inside the car. Uh, tires all look good, no leaks, fluids are all good, diagnostics are all good. Just um, putting it into dyno mode. Running the, um, I know it's an all wheel drive vehicle and it is a proper all wheel drive system. Um, we always run the dyno linked anyway it just takes any um, speed difference out of the equation so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a couple of runs a couple of setup runs <coughs> get the dyno and the vehicle all synced together and um, yeah I'll post some of the bits uh, in a second of some of the runs internally externally whatever uh, and uh, yeah then I'll show you the the final results you'll be able to see just how heavily restricted these are from factory so the 503 horsepower version in the S 
and the 469 horsepower version and the non-S are identical engines. They are, one is just detuned, simple as that. So yeah, already we've got a, a, you know, a chunk of scope that we can get out of the thing anyway. So yeah, um, yeah, so we will, uh, we'll show you what's what with it. Right, we are inside, everything is up and running, synced up, everything's back up to temperature. <coughs> Excuse me. So, this um, being a uh, model year 2019, it doesn't have the 7 speed gearbox, it's got the 9 speed gearbox. So, if it had the 7, we'd run it in 4th, because it's got the 9, we run it in 5th. Um, so, one second. And now we can hear her rip. Ready? Sounds so good. Beautiful. Long live the V8. Right, now for you guys to see where we're at with it um didn't go you know particularly aggressive with it um there's no particular need customer as well as possibly looking at downpipes in the future um so there'll be a ton of extra horsepower and torque to be unlocked then but hold on let me cover some bits so she pulled 465 horsepower stock but look 573 this is just software alone over 100 horsepower over 100 newton meters of torque as well. Deltas are really good. Um, it was doing some funky stuff. I don't know whether that was the dyno possibly um, trying to vector some of the torque a little bit, but you see tuned, it's a lot smoother. But yeah, not sure, because that wasn't actually showing up. Um, all of that wasn't actually showing up in the data logs. So, I mean, I kept running it and it repeated these results within a couple of horsepower. So the car was absolutely fine. It wasn't logging anything. It wasn't supposed to. It was meeting all of its targets it was supposed to. So yeah, the car was perfectly healthy and now it's um, perfectly healthy, but a lot, a lot faster. So yeah, customer's going to be absolutely over the moon, but it's just started raining. So customers have to be careful. Right, we are pretty much there. Something I wanted to show you guys. So obviously this is, these are formatic. So they're the Mercedes all wheel drive system, but let me quickly cover up some details. One thing we can look at is how much work the front and rear loading cell, how much work it's doing. So the red line you can see is actually the rear. So it's how much the absorber at the rear is dealing with, um, like how much torque it's absorbing. The blue one is the front retarder. So you can see that on initially on startup, the front retarder isn't doing much work. And then the car starts sending power to the front and you can see this, they're doing almost the same amount of work and then look at about five thousand no four and a half thousand rpm it looks like the front just completely turns off and it just goes completely rear wheel drive so that's why it's important to run these linked even though it's a proper all-wheel drive system because on the road say the front diff turns off when you're giving it the beans then it doesn't matter that all the power goes to the rears the fronts are being pushed along on a dyno if it wasn't linked it wouldn't be pushed along it would just freewheel and then you know its own inertia would cause the fronts to to slow down now what you don't want to happen is obviously for whatever reason 
let's say it does decide to throw some power back to the front diff, then the electromagnetic uh, brake will then have to deal with it. And then that's probably where you could potentially blow front diffs. That's why you have to run Audi R8s, Huracans, things like that. Um, 911 turbos, you have to run them linked so that the rears and the fronts are always synchronized. So it doesn't matter if the front diff turns on, turns off, you know, activates or deactivates it will constantly be synchronized with the rears. So yeah, it's just another little thing to show you guys what, what goes on in the background. It's very clever. The way these, you know, dyno systems can absorb the amount of torque that they can is pretty incredible. And obviously having the link is just fun. It's just absolutely necessary for modern cars. Um, even some cars will require, even if it's, let's say, front wheel drive, it will require to still see the rear spinning. Otherwise, sometimes it won't even engage your gear. 911s, so like GT3 RSs, if you put one on the dyno and just try to run it rear wheel drive, it won't get, even get out of first gear. You have to put the car into dyno mode or run it linked. The car just won't even engage into second. Uh, so yeah, so there's a lot more that goes onto it than, you know, you don't just strap it down and run it and, you know, you're good to go. So yeah, just thought it'd be interesting for you guys.